Okay, we are now recording. So, hello, my name is Samantha Harlow, and I'm the online learning librarian as well as the kinesiology and public health education librarian. Um, UNCG Libraries create a series of webinars for the UNCG community on online learning and innovation. Uh, this is, I think, the third semester we've been doing it. It started in fall 2018, so yeah, no, fourth. And uh, welcome. In this series, different UNCG instructional technology consultants, ITS staff, and faculty will cover topics on online learning pedagogies, UNCG instructional technology tools like Canvas, Google, Box, et cetera, and more. These are 30-minute webinars that are recorded in WebEx meetings and are placed on the library webpage um, that I am going to put in the chat. This page also contains other um, links, et cetera, for people to use. So here it is. Um, we also give the recording files to the ITC or ITS staff member presenting the materials and they can put it wherever they see fit. So just to cover some logistical things about how this webinar is going to run, please mute your audio during the presentation by clicking the mic icon next to your name to turn it red, but feel free to turn your audio back on by clicking that same audio icon again at the end of the webinar to participate in a conversation with the presenters. If you do not have a microphone, you are also welcome to participate in chat. If you have questions throughout the webinar, please put them in the chat. I will track the questions while the presenters are presenting the materials. So if you have any technical issues, here is my email address here. And you can also call me at my office phone number. So um, before I present, before I introduce the presenters, is there, are there any questions? Okay, so this session is hosted by Miranda uh, Lim and Maggie Tolodeski. Is that how you pronounce it? You can. Yes, that's right. Okay, uh, from UNCG Online. They're, um, once in, uh, Miranda is an ITC and Maggie is a graphic designer there, and they're presenting on graphic design and Canvas. So I'm going to mute myself, um, and you guys can start. Great, thank you so much, Sam. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this webinar. As Sam said, my name is Miranda Lim, and I'm an ITC with UNCG Online. And I'm Maggie Chalajewski. I'm a web designer with UNCG Online. So during this webinar this morning, we're going to talk about enhancing your Canvas course show with graphic design. So let's go ahead and get started. During our time together, we're going to answer three main questions. Why add graphics to a Canvas show? what to consider when implementing a visual design for your course, and how to actually create and add graphics to your shell. So we're going to show you some examples of courses that UNCG Online has worked on that effectively added some of those aesthetic bells and whistles. And finally, we'll share resources and take any questions you may have. Our emphasis today will be on graphics that help you create a great visual identity and help students navigate your course. We won't be focusing on content delivery graphics or graphics related to learning during our time together today in the interest of time. And these are important elements of graphic and web design, but that can be for another webinar. So let's think about why adding graphics to a Canvas shell can be a great strategy for a course. Since we're thinking about probably mostly academic courses in our webinar context today, I like to think about the analogy of a textbook. So without graphic design, nothing really stands out. You know, students probably buy lots of textbooks each semester, and ultimately every book is, at its core, a collection of words on a page. So a Canvas course is kind of like that, too. So you can kind of imagine your students looking at their bookshelves, digital or hardback, and seeing just these plain covers. Everything looks kind of the same, and while the content inside is probably really robust, Without a little graphic design, no particular text really stands out. But a little graphic design can make a big difference. So you don't have to be a professional graphic designer to do this kind of work we'll talk about today. I'm certainly not. But a professional like Maggie can be a really helpful partner in this work. So again, in this webinar, we're going to explore how to make your course stand out in Canvas and give us specific visual identities that really draw students in. So students will quickly know which course is yours and recognize that it's been well designed, just like the covers of these books. So let's tie this analogy back to your Canvas shell. Integrating design elements thoughtfully and purposefully can give your course a unique visual identity. For example, a user's dashboard. Students can log into Canvas and see all the courses they have access to. 
If your course has a unique visual identity, it will be easy for them to spot in the dashboard. Adding graphics can also help you better organize content on the pages in your Canvas shell. Lastly, having a cohesive visual design shows that you put time and effort into building a quality course for your students. All of these reasons really point back to one of our ultimate goals for every course, to give students an exceptional and effective learning experience. So the first thing to consider when you're interested in implementing visual design elements is your purpose. You might be tempted to add all sorts of design elements to your course, lots of images and colors and bells and whistles, but if they don't serve a purpose, they could be distracting the students. So just for fun, I'll show you some examples of distracting graphics. Let's say that you're working on a course about computer programming and you want a header image for your homepage in Canvas. A header image, which is also called a banner image, is simply a graphic at the top of a page that provides some visual identity and prefaces the text below. So in this example, let's say you want something with a little bit of visual interest, just something decorative for the computer programming course we're talking about, and maybe you're doing a Google image search and you start going down a rabbit hole of banner images, and then you start thinking about including something like this. There's lots of screens on screens. There's a lot of layers to this image. There's a lot going on and it's very distracting. It is kind of relevant to our example of the computer programming course, but there's probably better options out there that will make more sense. So maybe you keep looking, and this could be another image you find. It's related to the topic, but it's also pretty confusing. There's binary code there, there's an iPad, there's a cloud. So it's sort of relate, but it's really not that much better than our first image. So again, in this imaginary scenario, maybe you keep looking and you find something like this. So again, our point here is that you should really think about the purpose for including your image. You know, this is something that is relevant and unobtrusive. It could be a great option for a homepage header. It's relevant to the course content, one layer of imagery, simple, it's immediately recognizable. So again, consider what's relevant to your student, not distracting, and what relates to your course content. In addition to purpose, another important consideration is accessibility. Students of varying ability levels may enroll in a course and were required to comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act. So for example, if you want to include a header image on your Canvas homepage like we just discussed, that's great. But if it's displaying a meaningful course concept, it needs a descriptive alt text. This is text that's read by a screen reader for users with visual impairments. If the image is purely decorative, it needs to be tagged as a descriptive image. Canvas can help with this, and we'll show you how to do that a little later. Another thing to consider for accessibility is color contrast. Yellow text on a white background, for example, would be difficult to read for most people. What's great is that Canvas has a built-in accessibility checker that you can run for each page when you're in edit mode. And this can help you identify issues that may need fixing. So always keep accessibility for all students in mind when you're adding graphics. This is a topic that could be a presentation on its own, but in the interest of time, we'll leave it at that. Responsive design is critical to make sure your Canvas shell displays properly across all devices. UNCG Online has surveyed students asking how they typically access their online courses, and the responses have included cell phones, tablets, laptops, and desktop computers. Canvas itself is designed responsibly, meaning the site displays optimally on any screen size, so you'll want to make sure your graphic design elements do the same. If you ever tried loading a web page on your phone and there's an image, it would probably look fine on a desktop computer, but you can only see a portion of it on your phone screen. That's what you don't want to have happen. And we'll show you how to make sure your images display responsibly a little later. Finally, think about the practicalities of what you want to design. Can you create it? Can you maintain it? There may be resources on campus or in your department that can help with graphic design, technology troubleshooting, or testing your course to make sure your design elements look great and function properly. Definitely take advantage of those resources. But it can also be helpful to know how to create, add, and remove graphic elements on your own. This will give you more flexibility with your course and the ability to maintain it over future semesters. And if you're in a support role, it can help you support your faculty and their students. So in our remaining time, let's talk about three ideas for creating and adding graphics to a course. We're going to reference real courses as examples, and we'll explore how to create Canvas cards, responsive banner images, and colored page elements. 
using native Canvas features and entry-level graphic software. We'll be moving pretty quickly through the rest of these slides, so please just let us know in the chat if you'd like us to go into greater detail. Let's start with Canvas cards. When you log into Canvas and click on Dashboard, you may see colored rectangles that look like this for each course you have access to. These are called Canvas cards, and you can customize them for your course by adding images. Not every institution has this enabled, but we do at UNCG, and it's a great feature. When deciding on an image to use for your Canvas card, consider what exemplifies your course concepts. Something simple is best because the image is going to be small. If you can pay for an image, iStock is a great source. If you want free images, look for Creative Commons or public domain sources like Wikimedia, Pixabay, and Flickr Creative Commons. You can also do an advanced Google image search where you search only for images free to use and share. It's critical to make sure that you have the right to use an image in your course, otherwise it's a violation of copyright and that can lead to fines or legal trouble, which we want to avoid. So public domain and Creative Commons images are great options. Canvas recommends resizing or cropping a Canvas card image to 262 by 146 pixels. You can do this in graphic design software like Adobe Photoshop, or if you're not a graphic designer, you can use a simple program like Preview on a Mac or Photos on a PC. Save your image as a JPEG or PNG file. We have resources for you at the end of the presentation that can help you with this. So now I'll actually show you in Canvas what a Canvas card looks like. So here we are in Canvas, and your students, when they go to the dashboard, they'll see a, possibly a blank card like this if you haven't added a Canvas card just yet. So what I'm going to do is click on this course. I'm going to go to Settings. And you can see here, right at the very top under Course Details, there's an option for Image and Choose Image. So I'm going to click on Choose Image. And then here you can search Flickr Creative Commons, or you can browse your computer if you've downloaded an image and cropped it the way Maggie described and you want to use that. But for our example here, I'll just show you how to use the Flickr Creative Commons search option. So the example we gave earlier was a computer programming course. So for that scenario, I'll just type in the word laptop. And you can see that the images here that show up, they are part of the Creative Commons public domain, so you can use them in your course. So I'll just click on one here that seems relevant to the topic. And it's unobtrusive, as we said, one of your best practices. So click this. It's selected here as your image. And then all you have to do is scroll down the page, select Update Course Details. And then when we go back to our dashboard, we can see that this card has been added. Simple as that. Here are six examples of Canvas cards we've used in real courses. These images are from a variety of sources, so some are from Wikimedia Commons and some are customized iStock images. These Canvas cards give each course a unique look that stands out in the Canvas dashboard so students can easily find their course. Next, we'll talk about banner images, which we briefly discussed earlier. Banner images are a great way to continue with this unique look and feel for your course. This example is a Canvas page for a graduate level music education course. This page is set to be the front page, which is what will appear when you're on the home page of the course. If you aren't sure how to set a front page, we've included a link later on in the slides that has how-to instructions. So this is the first page students will see when they click on the course in their dashboard. The banner image really helps the course come to life. Choosing a banner image follows the same principles as picking a Canvas card. You'll look for Creative Commons or public domain sources, or search a site where you can pay to download an image. It's best to find an image that's horizontal or can be cropped to horizontal. Download your chosen image to your computer and then use software like Photoshop, Preview on a Mac, or Photos on a PC to crop or resize the image. I like to use 1100 pixels wide by 300 pixels tall to ensure that the image doesn't take up too much space on the page. So adding a banner image to a Canvas page follows the same process as adding any other image. So I'm going to go back to Canvas and show you how to do that. So here we are again in our course we just added the Canvas card to. And here I am on the home page and currently there's no banner image here. 
but I think it'd be nice to add one. So what I'm going to do is click edit and then make some space wherever I want that header image to show up. And for the sake of this presentation, I did go ahead and work with Maggie to choose a header image. I downloaded it, we cropped it, and we added it to our Canvas file. So I'm going to go to Embed Image, put my Canvas tab, select Course File, Course Images where I save this image, and then select this image we set with the header image in our practice run here, Computer Keyboard JPEG. So we can select decorative image, which indicates, as Maggie said, that this is just for decorative purposes and this image should not be read by screen readers. You can see it's approximately the correct dimensions we need. So then click update. And here's your image. Now there's one more step we need to take to make sure that this image is responsive, meaning that, as Maggie said, it looks great on a screen of any size. You want to select your HTML editor. And then you want to look for your width. Currently, this width is set to what the image is actually sized as, the 1024 pixels. But to make sure that the image spreads across whatever screen you're looking at it on, you want to select type in 100%. And I'll show you what this looks like once we hit save. So now we go back to home. And you can see as I resize this page, the image resizes as well. So whether this Canvas page is viewed on your phone or a tablet or your laptop, that image is going to span across the entire width of that page. Here are a few examples of banner images we've used in real courses. The first one was for an art history course. I found the public domain image on Wikimedia Commons and I added a color text box beside it in graphic design software. If you do something similar, just make sure you add that text to your alt text, unless it's a decorative image. In this case, we also had the title of the course on the page in Canvas itself, so we mark this as a decorative image. The middle banner image is a pattern found on iStock, and it was used for a music course. And the bottom is a stock photo of balloons used in a course that analyzed the Pixar movie Up. Since the film featured balloons, this was a fun reference to that. As a UNCG Online's web designer, I chose all of these banner images, but this is the sort of work you can do independently, too. Color dividers are a more sophisticated design element we like to add in addition to canvas cards and banner images. These are simply horizontal lines that break up the text of a page. You may have already noticed them in some previous screenshots. This is an example of a canvas course that had a content page with a lot of text on it. These blue lines help visually divide the content and organize the paragraph. When you're thinking of what color to choose, consider the other design elements you've included and choose a color that would complement those elements. And remember to choose a color with high contrast. A yellow line would be hard to see on a white background, for instance, and wouldn't be accessible for students with visual impairments. We add color dividers by adding a line of code in Canvas Pages HTML editor. To do this, we need the HTML code for the color so Canvas knows what shade to display. This is called a hexadecimal color code, and it usually looks like a string of six numbers or letters. There are lots of HTML color picker websites out there, and we link to one in the resources slide. So we're going to be using this code here on the screen, and I'll show you how to use this in Canvas to actually create your color dividers. And for example, UNCG's navy blue hex code is 003366. So you can see that right here. We'll be testing that out in just a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to Canvas. And we're back on our home page. You can see that I already have the code dropped into the page because there are currently three horizontal dividers here in that navy blue color. So to show you what this looks like on the back end, I'm going to click Edit. And I'm going to go to the HTML editor because we need that code. And you can see here, there's that code that matches what we saw on the slide. It's the line style. It shows you the width, which is currently set to two pixels. And right here, this is your hex code. That's UNCG's navy blue code. I do have an HTML color picker website pulled up here just to show you some other examples. So there are lots of sites like this. You can pick the colors you might want to play around with. 
Again, pick one that has a high contrast for students with visual impairment. And if you wanted to use a different color, like purple or maybe a dark green, all you have to do is select your color and then copy the hex code here. And you would paste that here in your code. You can replace that to make that purple. So on the front end, when we go back to the rich content editor, you can see now that I've dropped in that new hex code, this is the purple line. So you can look for colors that complement your Canvas card and your header image. And back to the HTML editor, you can also change the width of your line. So currently this one's set to two pixels. If you want to make it really thick, just for example's sake, you can put it to five pixels. Back to our rich content editor, you can see it's much thicker now. So that's all you have to do. Once you have this code on your page, you can simply copy and paste the entire thing. And I'll just paste it above our welcome text for this example. Go back to your rich content editor, and there it is. So it looks a little silly, but for example's sake, again, this is just a good way to demonstrate how easy it is to add your colored dividers. Save your page, and you're done. So here are two screenshots of examples of other color dividers we added to pages. The first example shows thick orange lines added to a module page, and that divides the content between the page header and the body text. And then the second example below shows a purple line separating an assignment prompt and instructions on what students should submit. So the content in both examples is broken up in a way that helps students kind of chunk that content intuitively, and the colors add a pop of creativity to the pages. So Canvas has a lot of documentation in their instructor guide that you can apply to your graphic design work. Things about how to set the front and the home pages, add a Canvas card, add images, and more. So here on this slide, these are just some resources for you to refer to as needed. And so are these. So with these resources, you'll have what you need to get started creating Canvas cards, banner images, and color dividers of your own. And that's the end of our presentation. We're happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Jeannie, do you have any questions? No, this was really informative. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. And you'll see at the bottom of the slide, and I'll add a link to these slides in the chat in a moment, we do have a link right there to a Google form. It only takes two minutes to fill out, and we would love your feedback on both the content of the presentation and the delivery of our presentation. So if anyone watching has the opportunity, we'd love to get your, your feedback on that. I will certainly do that for you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Great. So um, the next webinar in this series, sorry, let me pull it up, is um, February, Tuesday, February 12th at 1 p.m. And it's on Embedding Google Slides in Canvas by Susie Bowles. She's also at UNCG Online. Um, she's going to talk about the, how to embed the slides and the benefits of embedding um, Google Slides in Canvas. So um, stay tuned for that or come. Um, we also have one coming up this week on SAGE Research Methods, which is a database of resources on research methodologies, such as literature reviews, data collection, and more. Um, so that's on Thursday at 1 p.m. Um, so I'm going to throw this link here in the um, chat again for online learning, but again, note that it, there's also the one on the research methodologies. And that's it. So, um, Judy, thanks for coming, and um, we will hopefully see you all again soon. I'm going to end the session. Thanks, Miranda and Maggie. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Bye.